Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our candidate forum for the new candidates for Golden Rain Foundation. Uh, we have <clears throat> we had eight candidates. One of them has not shown up, but may come a little bit later. He has a seat up there if he does. But that means that we have a lot of questions, a lot of time that we're going to have to take, so that's why we are three hours for this forum rather than the usual two hours. Now, th <clears throat> three years ago, uh, a new process was put into place where one director each year is appointed by the individual mutual. It was United first, last year it was third, and this year it is Mutual 50, the Towers. So I'd like to take a minute and introduce Sue Stevens, who's the president of the Towers, and she will introduce their candidate who has already been elected. Sue? Well, I'd like to start, well, first of all, I'm the president. Why don't you come up to the microphone? Oh, okay. <coughs> Which means I'll have my back to it. I'm Susan Stevens and I'm the president of Mutual 50, and I'd like to start by introducing two of our board members who are here today. Pete Sanborn. He is our vice president, and Glenn Miller, our Welcome. secretary. You got a good looking secretary. No. Oh. Um, so, Rhino Rothberg is here today to be introduced. She has served as the president of Mutual 50, the Towers, for 10 years and has now been selected to serve as our delegate on the GRF board. Her accomplishments at the Towers have been remarkable and rewarding. And now I'm sure we, she will be a great asset to the GR board, representing everyone in the village with the same passion and dedication she brought to our board over these many years. Thank you. Ryan. Thank you, Sue, and, and welcome, Rhina. I've served with Rhina for many years on numerous committees, and we really welcome her back uh, to our fold. Uh, I want to acknowledge the fact that we are on Village Television. Hopefully, there are quite a few people out there in the village that are watching us today. Uh, it's also on Zoom. And if you have questions, you can send them in. Uh, if you're on Zoom, you can raise your hand. Uh, it, when we ask for that, or uh, you can can call them in at uh, the number that's 669-900-6833. And so we, we can take questions by phone. But let me tell you, <laughs> we're not going to be able to have very many questions from the audience or from outside members because we just don't have time. Luckily, we have a wonderful slate. Right now we have seven candidates for three seats, and we're going to go through uh, and ask them some set questions, and of course they will give their prepared opening and closing speeches. I'd like to introduce my fellow moderators, our president, Bunny Carpenter, our treasurer, Jim Hopkins, and I'm Juanita Skillman. I'm just a director. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Introducing our candidates. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> One of those days. <coughs> Our 
candidates, and they have dr uh, drawn for place, and they are sitting uh, and at the number that they drew. So number one is Cash Buddha. Kush, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I can read it across from me and not say it. All right, and he's number one. Uh, and number two will be Mr. Mohammadi if he gets here. And uh, number three is Reza Karimi. Uh, number four, now we get cash, <laughs> Akrakar. Number five is Catherine. How do you pronounce your last name, Catherine? Bravada? Bravada. Okay. Uh, number six is William Cowan. <coughs> number <coughs> seven is Joan Millman. And uh, number eight, help me on this if I've got your name all mixed up here. I have Kareem Nakata. That's right. Good. Okay. I made it. All right. So these are our eight candidates, and <clears throat> we're going to get started with the opening statements, and we will go in order, and each candidate has three minutes for an opening statement. The sequence was uh, determined by a drawing when they came in this morning as to what place they would have. Then we will go to prepared questions, and then we will finish up with the candidates' closing statements before we're done. So let's start with the uh, opening statements, and Kush, <laughs> you will be first. Thank you, Anita. <coughs> uh, good morning to you all. Uh, as you all know, I have been, on the, uh, been a director of the third board since 2017. During that period, I have served and chaired many third and GRF committees with great diligence and success. Some of the accomplishments during my tenure as director for the third and GRF are conversion of our street lights, <coughs> excuse me, uh, conversion of our street lights to LED, resulting in major savings of dollars for the mutual and much lacking better illumination that we needed. <coughs> Creating a charging facility behind the community center and one in the yard for the staff vehicles too. Uh, during my early years on the board, I was one of the few that insisted on starting the turf conversion program as we saw the rising cost of water and the benefits of turf conversion. It is still in its infant stage. Converting the paint program from 10 years to 15 years, saving a good amount of money for the mutual and still achieving the same or better results. So, let's talk about my goals. I have many, but here are a few main ones. Number one, bring harmony among the wards. First, uh, first I must say, we all are volunteers here. No $96,000 paychecks annually. <laughs> Threats, recalls, not uh, renewing contracts. All of these, in my opinion, should not exist. That limits creativity, good knowledge, experiences, and discourages prospective volunteers. Number two, create revenue generating activities, which in their own way would affect our HOA dues. What I mean is it will reduce them. Expand our EV charging program. Number four, clean up landscape. Now that we have several infrastructure repairs and uh, programs created for our uh, manors and buildings. It is time to concentrate on improving our landscape. With okay, Kush, your time is up. 
I have like four lines left. <laughs> <laughs> if that's okay with you. Quickly. Sure. Um, drought resistant and save precious water and high cost of labor. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I, sh I, I could keep talking till the cows come home. Please so, don't. <laughs> in conclusion, in conclusion, I feel I am the best candidate for GRF position and I have 40 years of experience in hospitality and business industry. Okay, I will stop here. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, <laughs> just for everybody's knowledge, there is a clock that shows uh, everybody their three minutes and how much more time they have uh, is on the screen and it's on a screen that they can see. So, it is, on, is, is it supposed to be on our screen in front of us? No, it's on the big screen right here in front of the lectern. Okay. <clears throat> Our second candidate today is Addis Mohammadi, and he uh, has not been able to join us for some reason. So I would like to just uh, give you quickly his, some of his statement so that we can try to be fair to him. He's lived in the village for five years. Uh, he li has two units, one in, in United, and he resides in one in Third. He says, I'm a passionate woodworker, among other things. When I moved to this village, I was attracted to the magnificent wood shop in Clubhouse 4. I can say something about what working does for my soul, but now the love of this community and its beauty of character and health created a great desire in me to serve on the GRF board. He concludes by saying, out of my love for this community, I've come to wonder if my process and cost assessment skills could be of value to the GRF board. I offer a practical, hands-on approach to project analysis, purchasing, cost estimation, and benefit <clears throat> assessment. So uh, if he does not show up, we will not include him, of course, in the other questions, but at least that gives you a little background on Mr. Mohammadi. Okay, our third <clears throat> Candidate is Reza Karimi. Thank you. Uh, I started with it. Who's Reza Karimi? I'm nine years resident of the Laguna Wood Village. Education, I BS Chemistry, MS Biochemistry, MS Petroleum Engineering, and PhD in Analytical Chemistry with emphasis in Nuclear Engineering. Experience, I have more than 30 years of executive management, R&D, and teaching experience. I have directed and managed several multidisciplinary <coughs> projects for DOE, DOD, and EPA, and other government agencies. Civic activities, I have served the full three terms on the federally appointed EPA Science Advisory Board, passport member of International Association of Environmental <coughs> Laboratories, American Society of Military Engineering, American Chemical Society. I have published journal articles and numerous presentations at national and international <coughs> conferences. Laguna Wood Village activities, past member of the EMS board, past member of the third mutual board, current member of GRF board, and chair of GRF MNC committee, and member of the several other committees. Uh, why apply for the GRF board? I'm borrowing a quote from our beloved President JFK. Do not ask what you can do for your community. To ask what your, you, do not ask what your community can do for you. Ask what you can do for your community. That's what I'm here. <laughs> I have the education, experience, and ability uh, being about bring about a potential <coughs> changes to our community and will be, which will benefit all of our members. So my past experience in education and uh, knowing the uh, community through the VMS third and GRF give me the inner uh, understanding of this very complex system of governance at our community. And that helps to bring about the proper changes and proper activities that is good for the community and benefits everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Reza. Our <coughs> next candidate is Cash Akrakar. Cash, your statement, please. Good morning, everybody. My name is Prakash Achrekar, but I, I call myself Cash Akrakar. I'm born in India and an American citizen for 55 years. I have three master's degrees, 
while working for our defense our contractors uh, as an engineer and consultant and have earned accolades for resolving very, many critical issues on time and at least costs. I was also a director of board on the Rehabilitation Institute of Southern California for over 20 years and was part of their growth in opening two new facilities in Orange County. I was able to successfully stabilize the community where I resided in the Anaheim Hills from the landslides, utilizing FEMA health and assistance over $1.5 million. I am known for my down-to-earth calm attitude and for my focus for resolving issues without splitting our teams. I'm confident with my expertise and experience that I will bridge our community to point VMS in the right direction and take us to a better future. My eight years of service as a director on the United Board has gained me insights on what we can do for our village to see a better tomorrow. Thank you, and I need your support. Thank you, Cash. <clears throat> our next candidate is Catherine Bravada. Would you give us your opening statement, please? Yes. Um, my name is Kathy Bravada. I go by Kathy. Um, I've lived in the village since 2011. Um, I've not uh, pursued joining the board here, but in past uh, units that I've lived in in Torrance, I was on the board. I served as president, vice president, member at large. I was uh, instrumental or a liaison when we changed from co-ops to condominiums. I worked closely with the attorneys. Uh, we had 80 units. I assisted uh, everyone in getting all of their paperwork together so that we could get it turned in. I also collected all of the funds that were required to do the change. And I'm sorry, I'm very nervous. I haven't done this in a long time. Um, <laughs> I also was on the committee as a co-chair when we uh, went over our CCNRs, our Articles of Incorporation, and we also um, had several people in our complexes that were notaries, so we were able to not pay, have to pay to have all of the documents and everything taken care of. I feel that I could be an asset to the people here in our community, and I would like to try. My education, um, I have an associate, I've gotta read this. Okay, um, I took several classes and for the member of the National Association of Purchasing Management. I was vice president of educational resources for NAM. NAPM, and also for the Institute for Supply Management. My duties uh, entailed uh, setting up meetings, getting speakers, and uh, just the overall education for the purchasing department. I've been a purchasing agent for over 30 years for the company I worked for, and I would like to be considered for the position, <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Big breath. Take it easy. We're all friends here. All right. Our next candidate is William Cowan. Good morning. My name is William Cowan. I've been a resident of Laguna Woods Village for five years, and I'm running for the board of directors of the Golden Ring Foundation of Laguna Woods. I'm seeking your vote because I'm committed to maintaining excellence in the amenities and services we all enjoy here in Laguna Woods Village while being fiscally responsible and developing and maintaining a budget that keeps our assessments as low as possible. If I'm granted the privilege of being elected to the Board of Directors, I intend to seek openness and transparency in all of our operations. Residents should not have to guess what is happening and why, and they should feel welcome to participate in our processes at every level. In this respect, I believe that most re residents want to be left alone to enjoy their life here in the village. 
What this means is that even though the Board of Directors makes every effort to keep residents informed of what it does, most residents, residents simply do not take notice, except for matters of particular interest to them. This all changes when something big happens. Then everyone takes notice. And I'm sure that it's frustrating for board members and staff who likely have been working on that particular matter for months, if not years. I can also imagine that one might be tempted to ask, where have you been? We discussed this in committee. It was published in the Globe. It was on the agenda for several televised meetings. We had town halls and so on. I believe that we need to resist this temptation. As Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurter once said, wisdom too often never comes, so one ought not to reject it merely because it comes late. We need to anticipate and plan for this surge of input that we will receive late in the game whenever we do something big. Ultimately, in one way or another, we all answer to the residents of Laguna Woods Village, the ones who supply the funds necessary for us to accomplish our mission. And speaking of money, it does not come in unlimited supply. If elected to serve on the GRF Board of Directors, I will work with my fellow board members to make sure that we have processes in place to verify that we are receiving the best value for our dollars, always remembering our obligation to be good stewards of the resources with which we've been blessed. This is our own money that we are spending, and we need to act like it. Just as we do not spend money in our private lives simply because we have money left over at the end of the month, we need to control the urge to purchase something new when what we have is working fine. In closing, I believe that my 18 years as a lawyer in private practice combined with 20 years in senior leadership positions in the federal government has given me the knowledge, skills, and abilities to fill this role. I share your enthusiasm for Laguna Woods Village, and I'm asking for your vote. Thank you for your consideration, and God bless you. Two, one. <laughs> Just on time. Very good. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, William. Uh, our next candidate is Joan Milliman. Joan, could you give us your opening statement? You just heard who I am. Okay. As a GR board member for the past seven years, I've found that every skill I have has been used and challenged in ways I never dreamed. As a researcher, I've studied staff reports, resolutions, consultants reports, and online articles on most of the topics the board has had to deal with. As an educator, I've been asked to teach such things as the basic points of Robert's Rules of Order. I have also needed to use my knowledge of English grammar and spelling as secretary of the board and as a writer for various communications, including the Breeze and the Globe. Finally, as a student of psychology, I have listened actively to what my fellow board members and neighbors have said about the issues that concern them, giving feedback as honestly as I know how, and have made every effort to find positive solutions for everyone. The work is not really work for me. It's a pleasure and an honor. The multitasking and problem solving stimulate my thinking in very creative ways, and I am grateful for the opportunity to have served this community as a GRF board member. I hope you will give me the chance to continue to serve you for another term. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Okay, and our last candidate today is Kareem Nakadit. Good morning, everybody. My name is Kareem Nikad. <clears throat> I've never been in board, but I believe any board needs new blood, new members, new ideas. <clears throat> I got my diploma, a high school diploma in commercial high school in Iran. There we go. I came to United States on 1969, and I got my Bachelor of Science in Accounting and Master of Science in Management. My unique occupational background is I joined my National Iranian Oil Company for 26 years 
I had different duties in different fields like accounting, auditing, management. My job involved in LC, which is letter of credit, export and import, which it is protect the exporters and importers. My last position in the NIOC was head of organization and productivity. Ultimately, I brought my experience to a very famous and luxurious uh, company, Neiman Marcus. I worked for 10 years, and I was a top trainer for new employers. Employees, I'm sorry. And I took a trip around the world. I chose Logan Woods, which is a piece of heaven, as a matter of fact, to my idea to live the rest of my life. I humbly offer my background experience and knowledge for resident satisfaction as a GRF Board of Servant. Thank you. things a little bit differently with the prepared questions this time. Uh, we have come up with a number of questions that we feel are important, and I want to let everybody know that each candidate was uh, given three items that we asked them to be familiar with. First of all was our trust. We are very unique as opposed to the uh, mutuals and how we are governed by the trust. Uh, the code of conduct for those who are members of the board and our GRF bylaws. And our bylaws were last amended in 2021. So they have had this material for a while to be able to research and go over. And most of the questions are going to have to do with those three items. We are not going to go around and ask each person to answer each question one right after the other. We want them to think about it. We've tried to make them open-ended questions. Uh, you have two minutes to answer each question. You do not have to use the full two minutes, but we, this is your opportunity to impress us. This is your opportunity to let us know that you have looked at the materials that we have sent you. So I'm going to uh, ask uh, Jim Hopkins to answer, ask the first question. And it will go to Kush. Oh, Kush. I don't, I don't get a choice. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, Gush, um, how do the GRF responsibilities differ from those of the mutuals? How, how do the GRF responsibilities differ from those of the mutuals? The mutuals are a housing mutual. They look after the buildings and the manners that we all live in, whereas the GRF is responsible for taking care of all the amenities or the amenities that we all enjoy, like all the clubhouses, the golf courses, and um, similar things that we all have over here, which is really the reason why most people like to come and live over here. So those are the high level differences between the GRF and the housing mutuals. Thank you. What? <coughs> Say it again. Our next question will go to Reza and uh, Bunny, would you ask the question please? Sorry about that. Reza, uh, describe the governance structure in Laguna Woods Village. Well, very interesting, <laughs> at least put, let's put it that way. Uh, I think it started, uh, Laguna Wood started with the Golden Ring Foundation as the, at the beginning, as a trustee of the, all the facilities. And then later on, 
It was divided up between the Mitchells, which is the third Mitchell, United, and the Mitchell 50. Those three Mitchells are responsible for the housing and uh, taking care of the, uh, mainly the housing issues. And GRF left with a trust, which is the uh, trustee, and uh, uh, taking care of the facility, making sure that they're up and running, they're maintained, and they're furnished, and they're available for the membership. Uh, those three, uh, four different uh, boards that we have, uh, I, my sincere hope is that they can work together and bring about the changes, especially in these uh, important times of inflation and a lot of cost increase and all of that, that they can work together and bring about changes that keep the community going and keep the community afloat for our membership. At the same time, we can save money and effort and provide excellent services to a membership. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the next <clears throat> question goes to Cash, and I will ask it. Cash, what does the Code of Ethics say about self-dealing and conflict of interest, and what is the difference? One thing, a position like this is supposed to be not for yourself, but for everybody. What you do for the community is more important, even if you don't like what the decision was made by the group. You have to live by it for the sake of Kennedy. Uh, Self-motive is comes last. It is the betterment of the entire community that is to be number one in everybody's mind, especially people who have the authority, the power to be on the board to chart out our future. And that's the main difference. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, the next question will go to Catherine and Jim. That's what do you have for Catherine? Okay. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Um, you may have heard of the phrase share cost. Um, how, what, describe, to describe the services and amenities in the village, what does that mean? The shared costs, um, the association um, collects our funds and sets up all of the ventures that we have and the people in the village who live there who want to join in these uh, events share the cost and the responsibility of keeping everything running smoothly. I'm not as prepared as I had hoped I'd be. <laughs> just, just be you. Don't worry about it. Okay. So, um, I only recently started going over all of the, um, the videos and the functions of the board. I've not been involved since I moved here when I left my last position. We only had 80 units, so it was much easier than combining everything that goes on here. So. That's, that's it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. No, that's good. That's yeah. just fine. Thank you. Uh, and the next question goes to William. Do you like William or Bill? Neither works for me. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> yes, me? Bunny. Okay. Oh, okay. What do you perceive, perceive to be the biggest challenge to the village over the next 10 years? Can you uh, repeat your question? Your mic was off. Funny. I just turned it back on. Just repeat your question. I can't hear what you're saying. Who's talking you, to you? You have to repeat the question. Repeat the question? Oh, okay. Turn your microphone. Okay. Speak the microphone. And speak into the microphone? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. What do you perceive to be the biggest challenge to the village over the next 10 years? The biggest challenge... Over the next 10 years, um, you know, I think I would begin with what's the biggest challenge that we've got right now because what's coming over the 10 years is a little more daunting in terms of being able to anticipate the future. And I will answer that question, though. But I, th I think it's the, that 
one of the things that we should strive for is um, a little more um, unity in the, in the community, that there have been a number of issues over which people have become very agitated, and um, that arises out of all sorts of things, not the least of which is, is misinformation spread about what's happening. And so people get upset about what they think is happening when, they, when it's not a, an accurate description of it. I think we, we have to get a handle on that. We've, we simply have to get a handle on that. But over the, over the next 10 years, I think we, you know, we're, we're dealing with an aging infrastructure um, in all respects. Uh, water, sewer, electricity, the, uh, the, the buildings themselves. Um, we do a really good job with uh, maintaining the roads. Um, but you know, trying to find um, the way through all of this as we work through the changing environmental conditions and we just we can't water everything all the time forever. So we're going to have to come to grips with that. Um, we've got uh, the transition to electric vehicles. We have to come to grips with how are we going to charge all those vehicles in this village uh, when most of the buildings are tapped out on their power right now. So uh, to me, it's, it's trying to look, look down the road and deal with things in a more methodical way rather than as an emergency when it presents itself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Joan, <coughs> your question is, what is the business relationship between GRF and the VMS employees? Okay. You would. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> All right. Between VMS and... GRF and VMS. Okay. Well, GRF originally set up the VMS board. And as far as... V you said VMS employees. No, okay, try again. Try again. The VMS employees work for all corporations here in the village, including GRF. And as far as our relationship with that group, we we say who the um, we vote on on the on the CEO as the beginning, but the rest of it is kind of up to the CEO to to manage. And that's we help to hire the management company. Uh, VMS is our management company, and as far as GRF is concerned, we don't run them. They have a board that works, works, makes sure that they do what we all of the boards request. Um, I think that's as far as I dare go. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> all right, uh, Jim, do you have a question for Kareem? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Kareem? Yes. What is the difference between the GRF operating plan and the reserve plan allocations? Well, I'm not a good speaker. I don't understand it and I don't know anything about it. Thank you. That's all. Honey, you have a question for Kush? <clears throat> hmm? um, yes. Let me turn my mic on. So, Kush, what are the limitations of, GR of GRF regarding the administration of the trust? <clears throat> I'm not really sure if I can answer that eloquently. I don't know what's going on. Can have it. It's, it's, I don't think so. I'm not sure. It is not a... I'm not sure either. <laughs> Maybe we'll try that a little later. Why don't you turn off the microphone and then speak? Because I think you can speak up. So, Bunny, I'm sorry, could you repeat your question? Okay. 
What are the limitations of GRF regarding the administration of the trust? Actually, I can give you a hint if you would like. Go ahead. <laughs> well, you got me, so I please hint. Okay, tr the trust amendment. Sorry, I have no idea right now. It okay, seem how about 2.1.4? Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you were uh, requested to control your... If you need to make any decisions over 500,000, you had to take a corporate member uh, approval. Isn't that what we are talking about? Okay, so that's where we are. Sorry about that. I drew a blank in the beginning, but is the for any purchase or action that you need to do over 500,000, you need to have an approval from the corporate members. And thanks for your help. I appreciate it. All right, Raisa. My turn. Uh, Raisa. To follow up with Kush's question, who are the corporate members? Who are the corporate members? As far as the GRF concerned, the corporate members are the three other mutuals, the third, the uh, United, and the mutual 50, because they were elected by the people, by the members, and they represent the members, and they are the ones that decide who's going to sit on the uh, GRF board. Those are the corporate members. And how do they control the G? What is their function with GRF? What are the function of GRF? No. What is the corporate members' function relationship to GRF? The corporate member function in regard to the GRF. Uh, GRF is responsible for maintaining and making sure all the facilities are working and in a good condition and uh, is being able to. You know, the members are being able to use them. The restriction comes when you want to, when, if GRF decide to add or construct a new facility, which is over $500,000, according to 2.4.2, they have to go to the corporate member and get the approval. All the other maintenance and regular maintenance of the building of facilities are the GRF responsibilities. So the corporate members come in when GRF decide to do something outlandish, build a building or, you know, build a new facilities or do a major upgrade which have a construction. Those when the members, uh, the other mutuals comes in and they have to vote on those issues. All right, but besides the financial, <clears throat> just for the financial answer. responsibility? No. Okay. What are the other responsibilities that the corporate members have to GRF? Why are they in the audience today? Committee meetings. The, they are, they put the GRF member, the corporate, GRF have committees, and all the committees, the corporation, the other corporation assign to the GRF committee, some of their members to be part of the GRF committee. For example, on the MNC that I'm chairing, we have GRF members, we have uh, third, United, and, and uh, Mitchell 50 members. So they, their input into what decided by the GRF committee is uh, to manage or, or have input by the other mutuals. So it's not that the GRF, when the committee meets, the GRF doesn't decide on its own. There are other members that come in and give their input. On the financial side, usually GRF collect all the fees and then divide up this portion for the mutuals and give them to the mutuals. And if you look at, for example, if you're paying $800, $800 per month on, the, uh, on, the, on your assessment, Okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> now, you got extra time because I <clears throat> gave you an extra question. All right, let's go. Jim, do you have a question for Kath, for Cush? Uh, cash. For cash. Um, Cush cash. <laughs> Cush cash. Uh, 
Cash, on what committees do you see yourself providing the most benefit to the community and why? Okay. On what committees do you see yourself providing the most benefit to the community and why? GRF committees. Uh, my, my background as an engineer uh, for umpty ump years, I think I'm pretty well set for committees such as MC, uh, such as finance, and uh, even management in some respects. So I, I have a very flexible background. I worked for defense industry for more than 30 years. So I know the importance of right decisions and with an eye for the future, not just for our community, but for the entire village. Uh, Laguna Woods, thank you. Um, Bunny, do you have a question for Catherine? For Catherine? Kathy. Okay. Kathy. How important is the trust, and what happened to the GRF assets if the trust was terminated? The, the trust, um, as I understand the trust, it holds um, the funds for the community, and Could you repeat the question? I, I know this is a tough one. <laughs> I would rather answer. <laughs> let, me, let me see <laughs> if I can help, OK? So it basically says, how important is a trust? So we have a trust, and that trust governs GRF. It's like our CCNRs. OK. So the mutuals have CCNRs, and we have a trust, which okay. is our governing documents. And so basically the trust holds all the assets. Okay. The, um, the trust is very important because without the trust and having the funds to run the organization or our village, um, we would be in dire straits. The operating um, functions of all of the boards and the committees and the, the expenditures in order to maintain those, you've got to have enough funds in the trust that can back any of the projects or other functions that are required to run the village that we live in. So if anything happened to the trust, we could, we could lose everything. So it's, it's important to maintain the trust and keep it, keep it safe. Thank you. Okay, William. What is your opinion of the 2024 GRF budget? What is my opinion of the 2024 GRF budget? Correct. I actually don't have an opinion of the 2024 uh, GRF budget, the, um, specifically. Uh, the, but the, um, I know that the um, Board members of the Golden Rain Foundation of uh, Laguna Woods have tried diligently to pass a responsible budget that, uh, while being receptive to the input that has been heard from the members uh, regarding the increased costs and, you know, the increasing number of people that are, you know, in essence, going to be driven out of our community by the increasing costs. Um, and the, the GRF is in a is in a in a sense, in an impossible situation, because they have an, they have a fiduciary duty. The, the foundation itself has a fiduciary duty as a as a trustee of the trust to manage all the assets of the trust for the good of the community, and that makes that makes for uh, some very difficult decisions and unpopular decisions. And so, I think that the uh, you know, that the board has has acquitted itself well in trying to do that. Uh, not to say that that you know improvements can't be made. We can all improve in what we do, but there is no doubt in my mind that the board um, ha recognizes its responsibility both to maintain the the corpus of the trust and yet keep the uh, the uh, HOA as affordable as possible within those boundaries. 
and uh, I laud them for doing that, and I look forward to being able to participate in that process in the future. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Jim, do you have a question for Joan? Oh. <laughs> okay, Joan. Um, I was so caught up listening to, to William's answer, I just I <laughs> forgot I was next. Um, Joan, um, what do you perceive to be the biggest challenge to the village over the next 10 years? <clears throat> Getting feedback. Okay, biggest challenge over the next 10 years. Well, I think partly this is manifold. It's not just one thing. Um, what I've seen recently is a lack of communication among the boards and among the residents. And it's important that we all go approach whatever problems we have as a unified group. Uh, so communication is one problem that we continually work on. Um, the natural things that we are concerned with, inflation and all the natural things that happen outside of our community that happen to us as well, I, I certainly feel are a concern for the next 10 years. It's, eliminating it to one thing is, is difficult for me. Uh, so I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think as, as, as Bill said, one of the biggest problems here is misinformation and if everybody has the same information and understands that information, we can unify and, and work together on the problems. I'm not foretelling what the problems might be because I can't, but we certainly see problems rising with uh, people breaking off from people and having opinions and so on that are not related to the facts. So it seems to me that communication basically, as always, is a problem for the future and the present. And that's all I can think of. Thank you. Okay, Bunny, do you have a question for Kareem? Yes. Um, what do you see is how GRF's responsibility differ from those of the mutual? Well, <clears throat> I think the most important duty of GRF is to make a bridge between uh, community members and the board. So the information that we get from the members, we can decide what kind of uh, solution we can find for the solving the problems. That's all. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Kush, we're back to you. <laughs> Kush, what are some of GRF's responsibilities to provide services, amenities, and establish guidelines in the administration of the trust? Our code of ethics gave us specific responsibilities. Can you name for you some of those? <clears throat> I think this microphone is <laughs> Come on down. Question. Okay. What are some of GRF's responsibilities? Your code of ethics listed five different responsibilities. What are some of the responsibilities that we have to provide services, amenities, and established guidelines in the administration of the trust? It doesn't like me. So, so what I read about your code of ethics is that it's set it's a set of guidelines that uh, define ethical principles and values that in, 
that individuals or organizations made by can barely read this I'm sorry so good decision making integrity uh, pro, uh, professionalism uh, respect for for stakeholders involved this was one of the synopsis that i created out of your code of ethics which is like a whole bunch of page pages Say it again. Why is it important for our directors to have a code of conduct? Very important to have a code of conduct because uh, we we need to make sure that we have integrity in what we do. We are dealing with uh, other people's money. Uh, we need to show respect for each other. And uh, what else can I tell you? I think there's some metal on somewhere that's causing a squeak. Mm. All right, Jim, would you have a question for Ray's up? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Reza, what is the business relationship between GRF and the BMS employees? Uh, VMS is a separate company which is contracted by GRF and the Mutual to provide services. VMS have a business board which must act as a business board which is different from the GRF Mutuals. Uh, business board oversees the activities of the VMS. Our relationship with the VMS is on the financial side. We provide funds and they provide services. That's our relationship. We set up the requirements, we set up the rules and regulations, and VMS provides services based on those rules and regulations. We are not managing directly VMS. GRF is not a managing board is not a business board, is a you know, governing board. That's our relationship with the VMS. We provide money, we have a contract, and they provide services according to our needs and regulation. And Thank you. All right, Bunny, do you have a question for Cash? Cash? Um, okay. <laughs> Describe the GRF trust, the trustee, and the trust door's responsibility. GRF is responsible for <coughs> maintaining and preserving this village. <coughs> the trust, GRF trust, <coughs> is maintained for the purpose of the village uh, and it, it's everybody's responsibility to make sure that our village is a safe place to live and our village is known for the good things what we do and <clears throat> strictly basically we have to maintain the trust relationship <coughs> uh, involved. Uh, I guess I can go on and on, but this should be good enough. Thank All right, you. thank you. Kathy, can you uh, describe for us the difference between GRF's operating plan and the reserve plan? Yes, um, 
the the association dues that we pay to that operates our village, a set amount of money every month goes uh, depending on your reserves, whether however you have it set up over a 10 year period or a 20 year period, part of the monies that go into the association, a portion goes into the reserves to cover the costs of painting, of um, um, changing of the appliances, doing the roofing, and all of that. So there's a portion of the monthly money goes into the reserves every year, and once that threshold for the replacement of, say, the appliances, or the threshold for uh, redoing the roofs or any other function, the association monies go into the reserves to cover all of those costs over uh, a 10, 20 year period. Try the, 30. Pardon me? Or 30. Try seven, 30. 30, okay, over 30 <laughs> years. Um, there are emergencies that do come up that can't be t necessarily be taken out of the reserve fund. So the monies that are collected on a monthly basis for the general operation of the organization can be used. But the reserve monies should not be used uh, for anything other than what it is set for. If there's an emergency comes up and they have to use those funds, once that's done, those funds should then be put back into the reserves so that when it comes time to replace the roofs or do the painting or any other um, normal functions that a co-op requires, the funds are there. And then the operating monies go into the day-to-day -day expenses. Great. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, Jim, you have a question for William. William. Yeah, I'm going to go off script a minute. Okay. And, uh, no problem. William had had asked, had answered a question before, and he talked about anticipating late input, which I I found intriguing. And uh, how would you assimilate late input that is critical to the decision and delays important decisions where time is money? The old adage. How would you deal with those issues from an administrative perspective and changes in how we do th how we do business here. Well, I think the um, the first thing would be to build into our decisional timeline the uh, anticipated late entries. Uh, and I mean, if they don't come, then we can make the decision more quickly than we had anticipated. But if we don't anticipate for that late entry, then we're then we're pushed up against the wall that uh, we're ready to make a decision, we've studied, we've done, we've considered, we've had input, we've had meetings, we've done everything we need to do, it's time to make the decision when in comes the parade of late arrivals that say, what on earth are you doing and why, and this is horrible and you gotta stop. Um, if we build, if we anticipate for the late arrivals, we can, we can uh, build around uh, the, uh, uh, the impediment that, that that provides while not having to shut off the input and uh, therefore not delay the project or decision or whatever. Um, exactly how much to, to, how to build that in, what is the buffer? Um, I don't have a precise answer, but, the, but if we don't anticipate it, we inevitably are gonna be up against the wall when it comes. And it, you know, the, the, one of the biggest challenges is going to be trying to figure out what's a big item because uh, you know, I have heard that things that some people consider to be relatively mundane can spin up into major issues and be a lot of angst about, uh, about it. So that I think that the, the, the challenge is to um, do our best to anticipate those flashpoints and plan for them. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Uh Bunny, you have a question for Joan? For Joan, okay. <laughs> so Joan, what is your opinion of the 2024 uh, GRF budget? I think we did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> and we no, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, as has been said before, you know, it's, it's difficult to, to do a budget that is 
we know the budget's always going to be high because everything is going up. And um, I think that we, uh, after however, two or, th or three versions of the budget, it's been worked through very carefully. And hopefully all the community's input has been included. And I believe it has. So when we come up with a budget, it's, it's as accurate as we can make it. So I think it's good. Okay. Thank you, Kareem. Thank you. Kareem, what committees do you see yourself providing the most benefit to the community uh, and why? What committees would you like to serve on or feel that you could contribute the most to? I had to promise something that I'm not sure if I can do it or not. If I be elected, then I'm going to do the best for the community. I'm not good a speaker, but I'm doing the job very well. That's all. Okay. Thank you. All right. Jim, you have a question for? Well, of course. Kush, assuming we can make him his microphone work. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps, can't find him. Where did he go? Oh, I see him. Uh, Kush, what is the difference between the GRF's operating plan and the reserve plan allocations? Wow, this is the third time we've been asked the same question. So, the simple answer is the operating fund does the day to day operations, the reserve plan is the money that we put in for all the items that we plan for in the future. And we have a 30-year 30 30 year reserve plan, and that money is being used for that. And every year uh, when we create the budget, we have a main part of the money going into the operating fund and some part of it going into the reserve fund. So this is the highlight high-level answer that I would like to give you. Thank you. All right, uh, Bunny, you have a question for Reza. So, Reza, you haven't been asked this question, so what is GRF's responsibility to provide services, amenities, and to establish guidelines in the administration of the trust? What is the responsibility of GRF? It says, what are some of GRF's responsibility to provide services, amenities, and to establish guidelines in the administration of the trust? Okay. The items that GRF is responsible for are seven clubhouses, five pool, two fitness center, two uh, fitness center, the equestrian center, two uh, garden center, two golf courses, tennis complex, plus fine arts, craft facility. GRF oversees those important services. Resident counterpart. Those are all the facilities that GRF responsible to maintain and make sure they're in working and that they're up for, you know, in, in the shape to be used by the members. And uh, those are part of the trust. There are other buildings in the trust, which is in the, you know, uh, in the uh, uh, service yard back by the, you know, garden center one. Uh, all of those buildings are part of the trust. Uh, the responsibility is to maintain those buildings. Uh, one of the issues that uh, GRF is facing, uh, most of these buildings are getting old, and they need uh, major uh, input or major uh, investment to make them uh, a better facilities for the members to be used by them. So those are the responsibilities and facilities that GRF has and has to maintain according to the trust. The GRF is responsible for maintaining those and making sure they're in an operating uh, condition. Thank you. Okay, Cash. <clears throat> We've all heard, hopefully, the term shared cost. 
What does a shared cost mean in our village with the service and the amenities in the village? What does it mean? The village is almost five square miles with empty home buildings. I even forget the count. Uh, uh, to maintain this village, for the past 65 years we've been successful, and we have to maintain it for another umpteen years for the future, for the next generation. <clears throat> it's not a simple job. We single-handedly cannot do it, and that's why the concept of shared costs comes. Every member, every uh, shareholder has the responsibility <clears throat> to take part of the share for maintenance, for the structure and keep it for the next generation uh, in good condition and even better condition if you can. That's the concept of shared costs. We have 6,320 something united and about 6,109 or some third mutuals and about 300 or something towers, I don't know the exact number, but we have a lot of members and they all have to share the cost involved because we're talking about five square miles, 4.88 square miles with lots of building, lots of infrastructure. That's the concept of share costs. If you don't maintain it, then everything goes downhill, and then the end of story. So that's what a shared cost is. We all are responsible to chip in a fair share of the shared costs. Okay, thank you. All right, Jim, you have a question for Kathy? Yeah, Kathy, describe the governance structure here at Laguna Woods Village. For just United or for, no. for all of them? The, the entire structure. For the village. <laughs> yeah. As you see it. Okay. One um, of the things you learn when you go on GRS <laughs> is the whole village. You're not looking at one part. Right. Okay. Um, it is set up with three separate entities. And each entity has its board and they have their committees uh, that... I've just lost my train of thought. Take your time. Take your time. Okay. Um, would you repeat the question then? How would you describe the governance structure? How would you describe the governance structure here at Laguna Woods Village? All three entities uh, function in their own separate section, and then they collaborate for the overall process for our village. It's not just the 50, the 3rd, or the United. We maintain our own little section, keep it going, do the committees, um, take care of that, and then all the boards get together, as far as I understand, and then they ultimately do what is in the best interest for everyone who lives in the village. Okay, okay. thank you. Bunny, a question for William? Question for who I can give it William. Kareem? No, William. William. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm hard of hearing, so. <laughs> <laughs> and I admit it, so, okay. Um, so I would like uh, uh, William to answer that question as far as the, uh, describe the governance structure of Laguna Woods Village. All right. Um, Recognizing that uh, the Golden Rain Foundation Trust was is sort of the, the foundational uh, document um, of of the of the Laguna Woods Village, the uh, governance structure is uh, we have the 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 mutuals third uh, united and uh, mutual number fifty, who are the if I re if I read the trust documents correctly or the, who are the trustors or the grantors of the trust <clears throat> and of the beneficiaries. Right. <clears throat> and so in some sense, they are at the top of the food chain. I mean, they, they, are, uh, they are the only board that is uh, elected, as far as I know, uh, elected directly by 
the residents uh, to represent their interests. Then uh, underneath that is uh, the, those three mutuals elect representatives to be on the board of directors of the Golden Rain uh, Foundation of Laguna Woods. So that the, uh, so in that sense, the, the foundation, I mean, the, the GRF is answerable to the, uh, the mutuals and who are themselves <laughs> elected and answerable to the, um, uh, to, to the, uh, excuse me, the residents. Um, if I understand correctly about the uh, village management services, uh, they have a contract, I believe, with all four. Uh, a bit, is that correct? Business relationship with all four? What? Uh, Third Mutual, United, Laguna Woods, and Golden Rain Foundation. Is that correct? So that um, the village, village management services, and I, I realize this is, this is, I think, contrary to the way most people think of it, um, as to who's at the top of the food chain. Um, because in some sense, I think village management services uh, views themselves as, be, as being at the top of the food chain. Um, and I, I don't see it that way. I mean, I, I think that the, the issue of, of uh, you know, the representative nature of this organization uh, is such that the elected representatives, I mean, and, and in, in a very real sense, they directly appoint the boards of uh, both the GRF and of uh, 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 village management services. Uh, and oh, time's up. That's it. That's my time. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Joan, uh, as a returning board member, uh, what committees do you see yourself providing the most benefit to the community? And uh, kind of with that, what is a GRF member's responsibility to the committees that they are put on? The GRF member? Mm hmm well, I see myself probably as uh, most valuable in the media communications because that's been my field. But I've done uh, other things. I've done landscape and enjoyed it and so on. The GRF member's responsibility to the committee is to find out all the facts you can about whatever issue is coming up in, under your particular committee to understand what that committee's function is and to proceed accordingly, and to work with staff on those things. And that's as far as I can go. <laughs> so uh, communication is where I, I really, uh, is my forte, but uh, I, I work on other committees too, pretty easily. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Jim, you have a yep. one for Kareem? Yep, Kareem. Um, You may have heard of the phrase shared cost used to describe the services and amenities in the village. What does that mean? I didn't hear it. Would you please repeat okay. it? I said you may have heard of the phrase shared cost used to describe the services and amenities in the village. What does that mean? Well, <clears throat> we are living in a very luxury and beautiful place and you cannot find any other places with all these beautiful facilities around you. So you got to use them or lose them. If you don't want to pay for these all beautiful facilities, you are in the wrong place. If you go to a very beautiful and luxury restaurant, you got to pay for the services. Almost go to the McDonald's. <clears throat> so we got to pay for all these beautiful uh, facilities around us, unless we're not going to have them. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Bunny, a question for Kush. Kush? Yes. Okay. Um, what do you perceive as the biggest challenge in the next 10 years? Ooh, lots of them. I would think that the biggest challenge, as explained by William earlier, is the aging infrastructure. We do have challenges in that. And the rising costs of 
the amenities and the utilities that we use. So we need to work on making sure that we make some smart choices, uh, improving on our EV charging, uh, improving on our water use, improving on all those kind of things, as well as taking care of all our infrastructure like, and that's part of the infrastructure. Uh, maybe we can reach out to get some grants from the government to improve our electrical infrastructure, which is really in bad need of change or improvement. So these are the big things that I think that we have. Besides the roads and buildings, those can be easily fixed on an annual basis through all our different programs, which we already have set up. So utilities and infrastructure is the number one thing that we need to concentrate on. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Raisa, how do uh, the mutuals participate in supporting GRF carrying out its responsibilities? What's the relationship between the two? Uh, I think I mentioned that before. Oh, I'm sorry, you did? Let me go down one. <laughs> I can't read my chart. Okay. Uh, the Code of Ethics uh, specifically calls out self-dealing and conflict of interest. Can you describe the difference between those two? Self-dealing is something that uh, you use to benefit yourself by being on the board. Uh, and uh, conflict of interest, if there are issues that you are participating on that issue and the board is voting on, you have to recuse yourself from being part of the voting system. That's simply the difference between the two. And, uh, you know, that code of ethics is very clear that you cannot use board uh, membership to uh, enrich yourself. And also, if you have conflict of interest with the issue that you're part of that issue, you have to recuse yourself on voting on that issue. Thank you. Okay, Jim, you have one for Cash. Cash, um, let's see. What would happen if, um, how important is the trust and how would, what would happen to the GRF assets if the trust were terminated? The trust was eliminated. Trust is basically like a backbone, reserves, something there for very emergency purposes. It's maintained. If it is lost, then obviously it's the backbone that's gone. And in case of emergencies, maybe we have wildfires that'll go through this community taking umpteen buildings down and stuff like that. We have no money to replace. And that's what will happen. So trust is an important asset to be maintained uh, as long as uh, the community is there. And it should be kept up to date with standards as the inflation goes up, as the cost climb up. We have to make sure the trust has sufficient funds to take care of any emergencies, any uh, unexpected happenings, etc. So that's basically it. Thank you. Okay. I have a question for Kathy. <coughs> Me? Kathy, yes. I've been wanting to ask her this question. So what committees do you see yourself providing the most benefit to the community? Um, maintenance, construction. Um, I have an extensive purchasing background uh, in bids and reading and writing contracts. I would enjoy being on one of those two committees, or, or any committee for that matter, to learn how they function, learn what the needs are within the village, and um, should we need to go out to bid, write proposals that um, would cover everything that we would need, whether it's to maintain the buildings, the landscaping, 
or any of those kind of functions, I believe I would be an asset in that field. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> William, back to you. Describe the GRF trust. The trustee, who's the trustee? Who is the trustor? What are the responsibilities and authority of the GRF board regarding the administration of the trust? <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, the trust, the, the trust documents. The trust, the trustor um, is, um, it, well, as it has evolved over time, are the, are the three mutuals. Uh, the owners of the, of the, are the nominal owners of the property that they, that they transferred into trust Actually, their predecessors transferred into trust. I forget the name of the, of the company, but it was it was set aside to be under under the laws of uh, California and federal law. Um, I forget the exact name, but basically a mutually beneficial um, group. the The trustee of that trust is the Laguna Woods. Um, not, I mean, the, the Golden Rain Foundation of Laguna Woods, as an entity. Um, the individual board members of the Laguna Woods Foundation are not the trustees. The trustee is the foundation. I've thought, if I remember the, 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 the documents correctly. Um, and I forget the rest of the question. Okay. What, what's the responsibility and authority of the GRF board Okay, the responsibility, as well, the responsibility trustee. of the board is that we have a fiduciary responsibility to maintain the corpus of the trust and to administer it uh, in the best interest of the um, of the Laguna Woods Foundation, um, or Golden Golden Rain Foundation of Laguna Woods, so that there that the, the the board members' direct and immediate responsibility is to the organization and to the trust to maintain the corpus of the trust, not to individual, for example, mutuals. Um, that, that they have there is a higher calling, <coughs> so that uh, the. And the, the operating uh, functions are described in the trust, in the Articles of Incorporation, in the bylaws, uh, in, in federal and state law, as to, as to the given the boundaries and the source of the authority. And my time is up. Thank you. Jim, do you have a question for Joan? Yeah, Joan, uh, how do the mutuals participate in supporting GRF in carrying out its responsibilities? First of all, the mutuals actually elect the, the board for, the mutual board elect the board here, the GRF board. And secondly, uh, all mutuals are parts of our committees, every single one of them. And in addition, uh, then they report back to their their own mutuals, what's going on, what the problems are, so that we interact with the mutuals. Once you're a board member for GRF, you're not a member of a mutual. You are a member of GRF, and it's, it's a fine line sometimes, but you have no longer a specific interest in, the, in your mutual. You have a specific interest in the entire community. And so in order to make it work, we have to keep in touch with the mutuals. So they participate again on our committees and report back to their own mutuals. So that's the interaction. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, Bunny, do you have a question for Kareem? So I'm going off script here. Are you familiar with David Sterling? And what function does that have as far as, as our HOA boards? I didn't get the question, please. Would you repeat it? Are you familiar with Davis Sterling? No. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right. Uh, <clears throat> we've kind of gone over the questions that we have, and everybody's had uh, three different questions to answer, and we've gotten various responses to the same question. Uh, you have some questions from the audience for us? <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> All right, this question is for William. William, 
Do you have the time to devote to the GRF board? Uh, to, be, to be perfectly frank, that is the that is the number one question I had for myself uh, when a number of people approached me about the idea of uh, running for and serving on the board. And uh, I, you know, I considered it, I prayed about it, and concluded that I, I, I do have the time, or I can make the time, to serve in this role, or I wouldn't have put my name in for it. Uh, the, the, but I won't, I won't pretend like I can put 30 or 40 or 50 hours a week into this. I can't. Um, but I can, I can fulfill what I understand to be the role of a, of a member of the board of directors to attend board of directors meetings, to prepare for those board of director meetings, to be able to participate in that activity, and to be able to participate in uh, one or more of the committee activities. Um, it would not be my personal recommendation that I be made the chair of a committee at this point, if for no other reason, because of uh, my relative new status uh, in the role, um, but also the, the time commitment that that would entail. But I could certainly serve on a committee and provide valuable input. You're squealing too. <laughs> okay, uh, let's, let's give that same question to uh, one of our other members. Uh, and I'm going to be personal here, Cash. Do you have the time to devote to GRF board? Well, if I didn't have the time, I wouldn't be sitting here asking for the opportunity. Of course I have time, and I will make time. And To attend committees? Pardon me? To attend committees? I still can't hear. To attend committees? Yes, definitely attend meetings, definitely do whatever it takes to make sure our community is safe and moves forward and not at a standstill. Definitely I have time. I will make time. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, we have another question from Annie Zipkin, but you didn't give us what your question is, Annie. It's on the back. On the back, sorry. Okay, here we go. Uh, and you don't have, you want anybody on the board to answer this? Sure. All right, well, I think this goes to Raisa. What creative solutions do you imagine for building E? <laughs> okay. I don't think we want to be creative. We want to be realistic about the issue because creativity you know, might take us in a wrong direction. We have... Sorry to interrupt, go ahead. No, it's all right, uh, you know, uh, as I said, you know, we need to be realistic about the need versus want in this community. Uh, we have a building that is uh, in a dire condition, and we have to move the staff out of that building to a leasing facility next door here. And we're paying, you know, over $200,000 a year for the leasing. We need to look at the available spaces within the community, including the center here, to see if we can manage or staff in a right way and use the existing facility to move them into that you know, uh, location. For that, we have started you know, a, uh, uh, a space planning and we did it. somebody from outside came in and look at everything and now we have an ad hoc committee to looking at that and make sure that we make a proper decision that is not based on the want is based on the need which have to take in consideration both members and the staff needs 
for the facility because every decision that we make will have consequences. The consequences can be on members, can be on the staff. That's where we decide how to move forward. We taking the, the committee will have members from other mutuals to look at that and decide what is the best way forward. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Those were the only two questions that we had from the audience. So I'm going to go back to one more or so prepared questions uh, for specific people that I think might be able to illuminate us on these. Uh, <clears throat> Joan L. Oh, Cush. Cush, would you explain the budget process? The process is lengthy, in a simple word. Yeah. The, but to elaborate on that, it takes us from probably February or March when we start collecting information and we have versions one, two, three, which the staff bring to us as directors and we review it, uh, make a post-mortem of it Ask this one and the ones that uh, set it together to make sure that it is acceptable for uh, the operations as well as for presenting to our members that it doesn't create a big hardship on everybody. So that is the process. I hope that is helpful and we don't need to go into much more detail, I guess. <laughs> I like detail. <laughs> All right. Thank in, you. In a private meeting with us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Jim. Kathy, what would you describe, uh, how do you perceive, what do you perceive to be the biggest challenge to the village over the next 10 years? The biggest challenge would be in maintaining all of our units, maintaining the grounds, finding um, a financial way to keep everything going without the financial hardship on each of the owners in our complex. Quite a few people, including myself, are retired and we adjust our budgets accordingly. So we need to fix buildings, roads, and maintain the, the beautiful sceneries that we do have in this complex. So one of the goals, I guess, would be to figure out how much is going to be needed on a yearly basis to maintain all of these functions and then do an increase of 10% per year over the next 10 years. And hopefully that will be enough monies to cover the maintenance and repairs of all of our units. Okay, thank you. Bunny, do you have a uh, last question for Kareem? Um. Same one. <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> so. Okay, so over 14. Um, Kareem, we have not asked him as okay. uh, what he thinks about the, the budget, the GRF budget. Is it for me? Mm -hmm. Would you please repeat the question? What do you think of the GRF budget? <clears throat> well, the budget got to be increased by eliminating the unnecessary expenses. But that, that's all I think about it. Okay, thank you. Can you elaborate on what you think might some of those might be? Well, some of the facilities we don't have, you know, too many users, so we got to let people know that these are not being, you know, 
useful enough so we can eliminate those. Okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to go to closing statements. We've gotten through a lot faster than I thought we were going to, primarily because you didn't use two minutes for each of your answers that we had allotted. But uh, let's uh, go the other way around. Uh, Kareem, would you start with your closing statement, please? Well, with the experience and knowledge I have, I think I can be useful for the board and I'll do my best to give the new ideas to, as I said before, to create a bridge between the people and the board and find out what they need and try to solve the problems. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Joan, your closing statement, please. Well, neighbors continue to need to know how to solve their problems and how to get more feedback on the progress of work that's being done for them. I like to think that GRF has developed some very reliable sources for that information, but there's always room for improvement through simplification, accessibility, and timeliness. I hope to continue to promote strong communication, collaboration, and congeniality among my neighbors, fellow board members, and our management staff. I envision Laguna Woods Village continuing to work for the cutting edge in communications, long-range planning, and service for a bright and happy future. If elected, I will continue to work on solutions that meet the needs of our ever-changing community. Thank you. William, may we have your closing statement? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity to participate in this Meet the Candidates event. I've, I have found it to be very uh, educational as well as uh, I've enjoyed the, you know, the, the thought process and the thoughtful responses of all of the candidates. Um, it's, been, it's been good to meet everybody. And uh, I, I think in fairness, the mutuals have a tough decision to make. They've got, what is it, eight or nine qualified candidates for three positions. And uh, so I do not, I do not uh, envy their, the need for them to winnow that herd. Um, I haven't talked, mostly I've, when I'm sharing my answers and, and perspective, I've talked about sort of my vision and approach. Um, and I didn't really talk much about my um, credentials and experience. I, mean, I, I have not served on the, the, any, of the, any of the mutual boards. Um, and some have asked, is that, you know, is that, a, is that a detriment? I actually consider it to be a strength uh, because I think it's important to have a fresh set of eyes. Um, you know, to, to ask what others might think to be dumb questions just to, to, you know, so that we all go through it. I mean, I've found in my, in my professional life that people who come in and ask the dumb questions require the ones that answer to think through why they're doing what they're doing. And sometimes it's like, well, we've always done it this way, is the best answer they've got. And uh, to me, that's not, that's not, a, that's not a good answer. You know, we, we need to be doing things that, that make sense in the moment. Um, I guess I've got uh, just a few seconds left, but, it, but again, I am here willing, ready, and able to serve. I think that my uh, background, both in the private practice of law and in leadership positions in the federal government, have prepared me for the role for which I'm uh, seeking your vote. And uh, I'm asking for that vote, and I thank you for your consideration, and God bless you. Thank you. <clears throat> Kathy. Hi. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to say that I appreciate this get-together, meeting all of the candidates. It uh, is very new to me. Um, the complexes that I've lived in have been much smaller, and um, we don't go, we aren't as elaborate as what this is. Um, I do appreciate everything that all of the boards do 
and they do have a tough decision to make. I hope I will be considered. I believe I have a good background in serving on my previous boards for about 15 years in a much smaller capacity. And I um, would like to see what I could do to help the community that I live in and have lived in for the last 12 years. Thank you. Cash? My friends, I love our village and the amenities it provides. I'm sure every one of you came to live here knowing the history of the village over the past 50 plus years. In our senior years, we all need community, friends, and a stress-free, peaceful life. We all are thankful to Roscoe Tisi, the founder of the village, for this wonderful village he created. We all have the responsibility to protect his legacy and care of this, take care of this village for us and for our future generations. Given the opportunity, I will do my very best to get solar power, improve our infrastructure by seeking state and federal funding for seniors, and I'll do my darndest for whatever it takes to make the village go to a better place, be a better place to live. Thank you. Raisa? Thank you. Uh, in order to govern, which is the GRF is governing board, you need to understand the inner working of the community. I suggest every member go to the you know, uh, village site and look at the GRF document that explains the structure. It's a flat structure of the mutual and GRF and the VMS underneath. That's critical to understand how the system works and how you can govern, how you can make a right decision. With that said, you know, I think a couple of things are very important. It's clear, concise, and timely co communication to prevent rumors and misinformation. That's critical. Cooperation between GRF and mutual boards are critical. Those two must not be overlooked. I'm very fortunate to have the opportunity to serve and better the environment around me, and it is a commitment and responsibility that I take very seriously. The GRF offer an avenue for me to serve those that I live with and enhance the efficiency, prestige, and lifestyle of those residing within the community. I have extensive experience in managing multifaceted projects, dealing with human resources and financial constraints, I have successfully overseen the completion of multi-billion dollar project and will bring that zeal to issue here in the village. The chance to make a meaningful impact on our community is an opportunity I cannot turn away from. One important thing is that, that having the education and experience is very important, but ability to make right decision and bring about a positive change must not be overlooked. Thank you for the opportunity, and uh, I look forward to serve this community if I'm elected. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Kush, your closing statement, please. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'm going to make it quick and short. I wasn't able to finish my opening statement, so I'll make sure I'm within my time limit. Uh, you have all heard several good ideas and plans in the last few hours. I would like to con conclude by repeating that I have 40 years of solid operating experience, plus my six years of volunteering on the third board, where good common goals were met. Apologies, I'm not a very big on giving speeches, but I am big on getting things done. Coincidentally, we have a lot to accomplish. Therefore, I humbly request your vote so I can get to work and make a difference. Thanks. All right, thank you. <clears throat> oh, God. Uh, just to, to let everybody know that uh, 
we will have a replay of this Meet the Candidates on Channel 6 on Tuesday, next Tuesday, next Thursday, the following Tuesday, and the following Thursday. Those are all before the corporate members meeting. For anybody in the audience who may not understand, the GRF directors are elected by the corporate members, not the residents. And at the corporate members meeting, the three boards, United, Third, and Mutual 50, will vote uh, for the three seats on the new cor for the new corporate uh, corporate members will vote for the GRF uh, delegates, the new GRF members. Uh, candidate statements that they gave the early their first remarks will air every Saturday at 9:30 a.m. beginning this Saturday from now until November 4th. So if you missed any or you want to go back and listen again, their opening statements will be uh, broadcast Saturday mornings, Channel 6 at uh, 9.30 a.m. We appreciate very much your participation. It's wonderful to see this many candidates. Over too often with our boards, we're out there scrounging at the last minute just to get enough candidates to fill the number of seats that we have. So to have a surplus of candidates uh, is a blessing. But I also know that we only have three seats to fill. But I encourage all of you, if you are not selected this year to be on the GRF board, look at other opportunities. Serve as an advisor on one of our committees. Run for either third or united boards. Or next year, we'll have three seats again on GRF. So uh, from take what you've learned from this time of running and, and uh, do it next year. But we, I do hope to see all of you back in a leadership position. It's wonderful to have that many people that are interested. Uh, any closing statements by my co-moderators? Do you want to say something? Yeah. Say something. Jim? Are we next? Okay. Yeah. Well, um, you, you can be last as your president. Pardon? Your president, you can be last. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> last but you, not least. You can, you can wrap it up, yes. <laughs> First, I want to thank all the participants. Um, this has been a learning process for me. I mean, because in answering your questions, obviously new ideas, new approaches come up as a result, innovative ones. And so I, you know, I continue to learn whenever I hear someone uh, bring forward their, their ideas. And I also want to thank you for your willingness to serve. Uh, I can tell you that in my few short years, uh, it is um, a task and a pleasure at the same time. But um, so... Thanks again for your willingness to serve. I appreciate you all. Okay, they said I'm last but not least. <laughs> anyway, um, I just wanted to let everybody know that on November 8th, okay, is the GRF annual meeting, and that is the time that we will tabulate, you know, um, the election and find out who's going to be on our board. And after... <coughs> The um, first part of November 8th, that meeting, we will also have an organization meeting, which will, which will be electing the officers. So one of the things that I want to bring up is the, the trust. As you know, we ask a lot of questions about the trust. The trust is extremely important as far as the responsibility of GRF. Um, we are the face of this community. We provide the enjoyment of everybody that's living here. And it's really important for us to be able to keep up these property values and the services that basically we provide. So with that being said, there is a, a, uh, a, a two, YouTube uh, that's on the GRF uh, website that you can see what the GRF, a GRF presentation on the trust and each one of you can learn more about the trust 
if you would like. And, um, and also, there will be an open meeting uh, either November or December. We haven't decided when it will be scheduled, which will be a presentation on the trust by an attorney. And everyone will have an opportunity to learn more about what those responsibilities are. So I want to thank you for joining us today and, uh, and the interest that people are having, you know, for those who are willing to volunteer. And it does take a lot of time and dedication to, to be on board. So I just really want to express my, candidate, my, my gratitude to each one of the candidates. And I want to encourage everybody to reflect on what you heard today because the GRF board is also a business board. We're running a business and we make important decisions. And so we want to be able to have, the, have members on our board that have vision of, of what we want as far as this community. So again, I want to thank you again for all being here. All right. I'm going to ask Paul to say a few words. Paul, would you explain the voting for the corporate members? I understand there's a ballot box up in the... Yes, the uh, packets have been mailed out last week. So when you receive your envelope, you will fill in an absentee ballot and you will bring it back to the second floor in the director's lounge and place your ballots in there. Um, if you wish to vote at the meeting itself, you can just vote at the meeting. Um, just keep in mind that if you join us via Zoom on the day of the meeting, that you cannot vote digitally. So you must either A, send in your absentee ballots, or B, uh, be there in person to vote on that day. Do you have a date for the corporate members meeting? Um, sorry. November 8th. <laughs> but that's our regular Got meeting. schedule right Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Very good. Well, again, thank you, everybody. Just one more thing. Sure. Uh, for the candidates that are here in person right now, um, since the meeting has run quicker than usual, um, we're going to have you come upstairs to the um, third floor to do your statements sooner. Um, so with that, um, Cash, you'll be first, um, so 12, and followed by Catherine at 12.15, William at 12.30, Joan at um, 12.45, Kareem 1, and Reza at 1.15. You get to have it filmed. All right, thank you all. Thank the people who stayed f through the whole meeting. And we appreciate your interest as well as those of the candidates. And this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>